Good morning and welcome to today's reflection. Today's reading is from 1 Timothy 3. Here is a trustworthy saying, if anyone sets his heart on being an overseer, he desires a noble task. Now the overseer must be above reproach, the husband of one wife, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not given to drunkenness, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. He must manage his own family well and see that his children obey him and respect him. If anyone does not know how to manage his own family, how can he take care of God's church? He must not be a recent convert or he may become conceited and fall under the same judgment as the devil. He must also have a good reputation with outsiders so that he will not fall into disgrace and into the devil's trap. Deacons likewise to be men worthy of respect, sincere, not indulging in much wine and not pursuing dishonest gain. They must keep hold of the deep truths of the faith with a clear conscience. They must first be tested and then, if there's nothing against them, let them serve as deacons. In the same way, their wives are able to be wor women worthy of respect, not malicious talkers, but temperate and trustworthy in everything. A deacon must be the husband of but one wife and must manage his children and his household well. Those who have served well gain an excellent standing and great assurance in their faith in Christ Jesus. Although I hope to come to you soon, I am writing to you with these instructions that if I am delayed, you will know how people ought to be conduct themselves in God's household, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and foundation of the truth. Beyond all question, the mystery of godliness is great. He appeared in a body, was vindicated by the Spirit, was seen by angels, was preached among the nations, was believed on in the world was taken up in glory. This is the word of the Lord. First Timothy describes the requirements of the church elders, those who are placed in high leadership positions within the church. They are to be men of good reputation, have self-control and fairness, and have the ability to teach spiritual truths. According to Paul, the overseer must be above reproach, the husband of but one wife, temperate, self-controlled, respectful, hospitable, able to teach, not given to drunkenness, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, and not a lover of money. So many qualities. God wants leaders that are in place to serve others and not themselves. He wants church leaders to devote their lives to serving others and glorifying God and to take time to get to know those that they will be overseeing. Paul is saying that if a man is married, he needs to look after his family well and his children should obey him and respect him. If you can't manage a family, how can you manage a church? Deacons likewise are to be men worthy of respect, sincere, not indulging in much wine and not pursuing a dishonest game. They must keep hold of their deep truths of the faith with a clear conscience. And deacon means servant, servant of the church. Leaders not to be chosen at random and not because they volunteer or expire the actual position that they are actually in. God can create gifts in men because gifts are given by the Holy Spirit. These servants are to be trustworthy and faithful so that it can be untrusted with various serving works for the church without anyone having concerns about the work that they're actually doing. Paul is presenting a faith foundation that a church needs spiritual leaders and spiritual servants. They need to give themselves to the good of the work of the flock. We need people who will give their lives to the work of leading God's people in the future. We must not only go to church, but we must be the church. And now I'll end with the last few verses of Timothy 1.3. He appeared in a body, was vindicated by the Spirit, was seen by angels, was preached among the nations, was believed on in the world and was taken up in glory. Amen.